Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Holotide here, and this will be one tip for every weapon in Halo Infinite. But before I get into that, I just want to know what your favorite weapon is in Halo Infinite right now. Mine is honestly the Stalker Rifle. I love that gun for whatever reason. Also, if you enjoy this video, leave a like as it helps me immensely. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. We are on the grind for 10k subs. So if you sub now, you get to tell everybody you were cool. First up is the Ravager. You can charge up the Ravager and it takes a long time, especially when you're fighting other players. And you can fire a large blast. And what I like to do is use this as an area of denial weapon. So basically I put it on key points or wherever opponents are grouped up trying to hide. The lightning sniper rifle, well, kind of. You know that headshots can take out a Spartan in one blast if you hit all of it. But what you probably didn't know is that the gun actually needs time to recharge before you can fire a second shot. Because if you don't let it charge all the way, you won't get full damage. An easy way to tell is to look at the targeting reticle and wait for it to pulse. That's when you know that you're ready to shoot again. Next up is the Mangler, and if you've ever played Destiny, it's kind of like a hand cannon. Three headshots from anywhere is pretty much gonna get you that kill. It's got a little bit of a drop off, but just aim for the head. A couple of you may know that the AR has a headshot multiplier, but it only applies after the shield is broken. So this means that you can focus on tearing up the opponent's center mass and then get an extremely quick defeat by going for the head and make sure you're utilizing that smart link to help. Next up, we have the Pulse Carbine. Don't use it. The BR-75, look, if you don't know the standard three, you know, shots to the body and the last burst to the head, well, I, I really don't know what other tip I can give you than that. The Commando actually got a nerf before the beta came out, but I use the Commando as a sort of DMR. I tap fire it, I stay at super long ranges, and it's pretty effective. Basically, I use it to clean up kills when my teammates are fighting people and nobody's paying attention to me. Now we have the sidekick, and this is gonna be a tough pill to swallow for a lot of people, but the sidekick is not that great of a primary weapon. Shocker, I know. It is, however, amazing at cleaning up kills. If you take the shields down and then swap to it extremely fast, you can rip people apart. For the plasma pistol, we're gonna get into some math. It takes one fully charged shot and four headshots, or one fully charged shot and 14 body shots to kill an enemy. So my tip is to leave it on the ground. Yeah, taking the shields off is great, but the tracking is not amazing, and I can't really endorse this weapon, especially since it's lost its EMP functionality on vehicles. Next up, we have the Disruptor, and it will break the shield with about three hits on the Spartan, and at that point, it'll start to do damage over time. The coolest thing is that that prevents shield regeneration. Also, like the Shock Rifle, you can chain the electricity to multiple targets, so you can actually get some cool multi-kills if the enemies are bunched up. 90% of players don't know that the Bulldog is a fully auto shotgun and you only need two shots to either the head or the body to kill a player, so get up close and stuff your barrel into their bodies and let it rip. There are a lot more weapons than what I thought. The heat wave is a useful weapon for picking at enemies who are hiding behind cover or a corner. Use the hard light projectile aspect of this gun to hit some sick off the wall shots for cleanup kills. I try to do it all the time. The Sentinel Beam takes 1.5 seconds to kill to the body, but the real bread and butter of this weapon is the ability to hit multiple targets since it goes through them. This means that you could feasibly take out a Warthog's driver, penetrate to the gunner, blow the Warthog up, and kill the extra passenger. The Needler isn't especially effective in Halo Infinite, though the tracking is, you know, pretty weak. You still need to stick at least half of the needles in a magazine to get a kill. That's kind of nuts to me. That combined with the strafe speed, it's not great for enemies who are decent at movement. The Stalker Rifle is my new favorite weapon in Infinite, and it's like a more powerful DMR. It takes three headshots to take out an opponent, so use it as such. I see a lot of people saying that it's the banished version of a sniper rifle, and I just don't think that's true. Now we have the sniper rifle, and shoot at the head. Also, check out my sniping tips video. The link will be in the description and in the comments. The skewer is the successor to the Spartan. Blah! The skewer is the successor to the Spartan laser, and it has some pretty gnarly drop off and a incredibly long reload time. So take your time, line up the shot, and pray. The Cinder Shot has two firing modes. One is for bouncing the nade like projectiles, like the Pro Pipe of old, and the second adds a little bit of tracking and will explode on impact although it seems kind of finicky. Honestly, I would just say to use it like the pro pipe. 
and try to bounce your shots into people, shoot right in front of them, have it bounce right into them. Now we have the Hydra, and to me this weapon is a shell of its former self, especially from Halo 5, because that thing could be nuts. It comes with two modes, one is for tracking, and one just, you know, is a direct fire one. I would use it at range and almost as a concussion type of weapon to disorient your enemies. And please do not be afraid to spam because it takes like three of these rockets to kill somebody. Big gun go boom. Shoot big gun at people. Now we have the gravity hammer and to be honest, I mean it's self-explanatory. You just smash people like the Hulk. Finally, we come to the energy sword, and what you need to do is make sure that you wait until your reticle changes colors. That way you can get that extra lunge, even though it's not as big as it used to be in the older Halo games, it's still there a little bit. That's going to do it for the video, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoyed it, if you have tips of your own, leave them in the comments down below. I would love to see them. Again, if you like these type of videos, make sure you subscribe, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.